Hello and welcome to the Unbundled Attorney Mastermind Podcast. My name is Dave Ahrens and I'm the founder and CEO of Unbundled Attorney. In this podcast, we interview our Unbundled Attorneys, as well as the leading experts in the industry to identify the best practices for converting leads into paying clients and how to ethically and profitably deliver unbundled legal services and other affordable options in your practice. To learn more about how exclusive unbundled leads can help you grow your practice, visit our website at unbundledattorney.com. All right, welcome to the show. I am very happy to welcome Jacob Sapochnik, who is one of our unbundled attorneys in San Diego County. Uh, working together with him for a long time. Uh, yeah. Originally met way back in the day at the the Thrive Business Conference, all about yeah. creating four purpose aspects, uh, mm-hmm. empowering entrepreneurs to make a difference in impacting their communities that they serve. So really happy to have an opportunity to be chilling here today yeah. with uh, with Jacob and, and catching up on all the uh, amazing success he's had in his firm uh, and some other realms as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, happy I mean, one, one, yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Um, Maybe one of the things that a lot of don't, a lot of people don't know you. We were just talking about the fact that you actually own a coffee shop, and a couple other entrepreneurial ventures. Maybe you right. can start by just yeah. sharing about the idea behind the coffee shop. <clears throat> so the coffee shop, you know, kind of like a, a, everything that we do at the at the practice, it's all about the community, right? Because we mm-hmm. want to be, you know, helping people. We're engaging with with our audience, with our, you know, customers. So for me, the coffee shop was a place where I can actually, um, you know, come down to the people, like understand what people want. Talk, have you know daily conversations with with customers. I enjoy that kind of it. Kind of fuels my day, you know. So mm. that's the reason why I started the the you know our, our coffee shop. Simon says, mm-hmm. which is our first location. Where I just gonna spend time a few times a week, have a coffee, and, you know, meet with the customers, understand what you know what do they do, where do they come from, why they're here. You know, I like that. The same the same reason why I enjoy practice immigration law because it's one of those practices where you actually meet the customers, you deal mm-hmm. with them one on one. And then the other business we started was uh, our co-working space, Community, which is the place where we sit here. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, our community. This is the digs. Co-working space, which is another, you know, reason where we want to bring entrepreneurs together, understand their pain points, what drives them to succeed, help them out, and be kind of be around them. You know, the, the energy of being around entrepreneurs mm-hmm. really helps me do better things at the law firm and in my other businesses. So that's, that's the reason why I'm doing those things. Yeah, we've had a lot of attorneys that have taken advantage of virtual offices mm-hmm. and co-working spaces, especially right. when they're first getting their practice started. Correct. Because in most cases, you can just you know rent a space by the hour mm-hmm. or by the day, you know, a- basically on an as-needed basis. Right. So they mm-hmm. don't necessarily have to make a full investment into the overhead mm-hmm. when they're first getting their firm started. Correct. And so in, in community La Jolla, where we have two locations. In this location, part of the back end of our, our space is designed for attorneys because mm-hmm. we have private offices. And our first location is more of an open space. But in this location, we have offices that attorneys can rent per hour, per day. And I'm doing events uh, once a month, training attorneys about marketing, business development, just you know, mindset. We're gonna do more of those throughout the year, mm-hmm. but we have that option here in this place. Do you so we have lawyers here as well. Awesome, do you, yeah. do you stream the, the events online, like on a live stream, or so like the events for, we, for lawyers that might want to. The events that we had so far for attorneys, we haven't done. We haven't streamed them online, but we're going to start doing that as well because mm-hmm. we want to make sure that you know they feel comfortable. We want to kind of test it out what it looks like, but now we have the format, so we're going to start uh, you know broadcasting and recording them as well. So uh, you know, nice. But yeah, but that's kind of the the idea behind it. Okay, well, keep me informed yeah. on uh, when you start to stream them, and then mm-hmm. I can go ahead and link to sure. the show notes in this podcast so that anyone wants to participate and absolutely you know absolutely. plug into the trainings that you're doing for attorneys out of the co-working space so you've got they're both called community uh-huh. community correct in la jolla and then well, the other hillcrest. Yeah. hillcrest but the one in la jolla is, is more designed for attorneys because we, we have private offices the mm-hmm. conference room where we're sitting right now and other areas that are more secluded so attorneys feel more more privacy mm-hmm. but also they can be outside in the in the common area which is the co-working area where if they want to meet customers or if they want to meet other like-minded attorneys, mm-hmm. they're able to do that so they don't feel alone because most attorneys who start practices, if they, if they have an office, they feel always kind of alone. It's hard to kind of boost yourself mm-hmm. to do uh, more things because you'll feel, uh, you know, what am I going to do? Who's going to mentor me? Yeah, you feel you isolated. Know. Yeah, here it's more of a yeah, collaboration. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. It's almost like a mastermind. Yeah, kind of, mm-hmm. which we'll do more of that mm-hmm. because the, the, the thing is, most attorneys who come here, um, they don't understand that 
they need to be part of like a mastermind type of environment. And mm -hmm. then they're not used to it. So we don't want to push it on somebody that is not familiar with that. Mm -hmm. But once they understand that it's actually helpful, then we're going to, hey, here, come join our event or, you know, come join our discussion forum or whatever you call it. And then they feel more comfortable. And then I'm going to start doing it on a more regular basis. Yeah. So people feel, oh, yeah, you know, last month we talked about marketing. This month we talked about how to deal with angry clients. Next <laughs> thing we we'll deal how to, you know, how to scale your practice. So mm -hmm. those are going to be more things that we'll do on a regular basis. And, and definitely I'll, I'll record them and, and, and stream them so more people can see it. Yeah. And you also have a, a podcast that you ran for many years right, uh, yeah. with Ray Falling. So, so most attorneys that know me, they know uh, the Enchanting Lawyer podcast, which mm -hmm. I'll re will relaunch hopefully after this, uh, in the next few months. But the premise behind the podcast was, first of all, to share stories of other attorneys and non-attorneys mm -hmm. who do amazing things because my premise was you always want to learn from people who are not doing the same things that you do. Mm -hmm. So I, I, in, in the podcast, I did have attorneys which were doing different things, but most of my guests were non-attorneys. And so the idea was, why don't you learn from somebody who is not like you and just mm. pick up like a marketing tip or maybe a um, you know, leadership tip or some, some, some other, just like I did. You know, everything mm -hmm. that I learned was n from non-attorneys. Mm -hmm. And I implemented it in my practice because it's very difficult to copy your competition because you, know, you just do the same thing. You yeah. also want to do something different try to you know, adopt it in your practice and then see if it works, mm -hmm. which is kind of was my, always my philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, I can see that as I've got to know you, you know, you're always at business with different kinds of conferences. Right, you know, which are not legal, necessarily. They're all yeah, like marketing, yeah, yeah, exactly. inspiration, um, you know, could be uh, something that will uh, inspire or, or motivate, mm -hmm. and then you come back and you, and you implement even little things in your practice, that always helps. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially some of the conferences you know, in the internet marketing world yeah. or in Thrive, it's like... Even when we met, like Thrive, that was not sure. a legal conference. That was more of a business conference, but it had a, some sort of a giving back element. Mm -hmm. And when I came back from that conference the first time, we actually changed the, you know, the, the tagline of, of our law firm. Now we call this serving to give. Mm. In the past, that was after Thrive. Because the idea is everything that we make, portion of, portion of it should be uh, you know, given back, either financially or by services to other attorneys and, and, our, and our clients. Mm -hmm. We donate you know, money to charities, and we offer our, our expertise to other attorneys who want to learn. We don't just, oh, you know, we, don't want, we, don't, we want to share with others. We mm -hmm. don't want to just keep it in. Yeah. Which is, that's the premise behind Survey to Give. Yes, yeah. where it's actually built into the model such that as you grow your mm -hmm. firm, yeah. your giving exactly. grows along with it, right? You have to. Otherwise, if you keep it inside, you're never going to grow. Mm. It's going to be always like kind of a, you know, but the, but the more you give, the more you get and the more you're able to scale, which mm. has kind of always been our premise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think nowadays a lot of people, <clears> especially <throat> with social media, and that there isn't really a, a curtain. Like right. the curtain's been lifted by companies. Absolutely. And yeah. so, you know, your yeah. culture and how you treat people and what it is you're doing yeah. becomes so much more important uh, just from the growth of a business standpoint. Because people see that and they want to be a part of working with you specifically. And I give an example. You know, being open to ideas is really key in our industry. And, and you know, just about a year ago, uh, somebody called my office, and um, it's a it's a person I worked with in the past uh, on a documentary that that he got an Emmy for that documentary. He said, "Listen, I was approached by a few media outlets and want to do a documentary about an attorney in the Trump era as Trump was going to be elected." And I was like, you know what, why not? And so they came to my, my office and they filmed for about two weeks a reality show about me and the practice as Trump was, literally the week when Trump was elected. Mm. And now we have a pilot. It's called Immigration Master. It's going to, it's pitched right now to Netflix and a bunch of other uh, uh, you know, media outlets. And we hopefully we'll, we'll hear something by May if the show was selected. And then if, if it is, we're gonna do 15 episodes mm. of a reality show based on our, on our practice. And, I mean, and if, it, and if it, it's not going to be selected, I have a full pilot that was created for me mm -hmm. that I can use for marketing purposes. I can put it on YouTube, break it down, and who knows? I mean, it's just a cool thing to have a pilot. Yeah. And they filmed in my house with my kids, my family. It was amazing. Hmm. Like, so what? Yeah. I mean, so I'm curious what yeah. you talked about or shared about how this presidency has shifted immigration so and, and some of the things you've had to to do to adapt both for your right, helping right. your clients. Yeah. deal with some of the fear and uncertainty that they've had to address, and then also as an, a practicing attorney, of course. figuring out new pathways to serve So them. if I go back when they filmed, um, I, I remember there was, um, I'm coming back from Tokyo. I, had a, I was speaking in Tokyo, and I, and I spent a week there. And when I returned, it was the day when Trump was elected, so I actually missed the elections. I wasn't, I wasn't here when he was inaugurated. I was, I was on route to California. And when I landed, literally two hours later, I did a, v a Facebook Live, 
and I spoke about my feelings saying, listen, this is, yes, he's the president, but he's not a king. You know, he cannot just do whatever he wants. He, he mm -hmm. can impact the, the mood. He can change the dynamics, but he's not, he cannot just say. And so that live was like, we had a, you know, f you know a thousand people on or something like that. It was crazy. And the people shared it. And, um, and I said, I said, you know, he, you know, we, you know, we have time. It's going to be until January 20th until, you know, it was November, remember? I said, you know, he's not going to take office until January 20th, so don't, don't be scared. Or, and, and people were confused, like, what's going to happen? He's, you know. But I said that it's not going to be the same anymore because while he's not the king and he cannot just decide what he wants to do, that whole mood of what is possible for immigrants is going to change. Yeah. And that's really what I said, and, and it's true to this day. To this day, it's all negative. Like, you can't, you know, you can't just come in here and start a company like you used to be. You can't just... You know, if you're undocumented, you you gotta be scared for your for your life. Uh, so the, the the mood of of immigration has changed, mm. and what I see for us immigration attorneys is that processing cases become more difficult. We get a lot more denials. We get a lot more requests for evidence. Mm. Call them RFEs. You've seen that happening. Of course, it's mm -hmm. happening right now. Mm -hmm. We're getting uh, there are more things that we can't do anymore. For example, you know, people were able to adjust their status, literally within weeks of arrival to the U.S. Now they have to wait three months. Mm. It's a it's a big shift. S small things like that, but th but th these are important things to show, you know, you know his 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 re you know verbiage about who can come in, who cannot come in. He wants to cancel the visa lottery. He wants to, you know, cut um, legal migration by half almost. You know, mm -hmm. kids won't be able to sponsor their parents. Mm -hmm. Some of the ideas that he presented in, in the state of the union. Yes. So what does it what does it mean for our practice? It means that it's going to be more difficult. First of all, to do cases. It means that it's going to limit uh, uh, the things that we can do. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of the sm solo attorneys, and, and, I, and, I, and I had a call from a, a colleague of mine from New York. She's been in practice for four years, and she's considering closing her practice and working for somebody else right now because she's not, she, does, she doesn't get enough cases. Hmm. Um, the cases that she is able to do are getting denied, and she doesn't really know what to do. So I feel like the space is going to, uh, the big firms, the bigger firms like a Fragerman or all, you know, the big players in the space, are continue to expand because you know, they, they have enough uh, volume of corporate clients just to survive. Firms like mine that have been around for 15 years plus, I think we'll be okay. Of course, you know, we're gonna suffer some uh, you know, hit in business, but we'll be able to compensate by doing other things that we were not able to do before, like maybe do more I-9 compliance, maybe do offer some audits for employers, maybe be more creative on visas. Um, so you, know, you, you have to kind of be flexible, but it's definitely, you know, you, we de we, even us, we definitely see a shift in the business. It, it hurt our business for sure. Already, you've seen it. It, hurt. it has, you know. So it's not people say, "Oh, Trump is going to come in. You're going to have a lot of business." It's not like people get deported every day, and we, <laughs> you know, and, and we, we go yeah. out there and, and we have all these cases. It's just, you know, it's it's different. So well, there was there was like an initial bump because we you know, sure. certainly with all the attorneys we worked with, yeah, yeah. we could see that immigration volume went up right. for all the people that have maybe been permanent residents and yeah, now yeah. want to become a citizen, for or sure. people that have been. Yeah, you know, yeah. on, on a short term, you're like, okay, maybe I really need to take this path. Absolutely. For so yeah. there was that, and, but that almost was short lived to some degree. Absolutely. Now it's it just going to flatten, and, and people are finding, well, do I do this or can I do this? Or this? There's a lot of things that you can't really do anymore. And so I feel, I don't think, I, I think immigration law is still going to be a good business. It's just that you really have to, um, like, in, like in any business, like in any area of law, you can't just sit and do the same thing for years. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's kind of like, a, like in cryptocurrency, you know, like a co correction, you know, it's not going to always go up. Mm -hmm. At some point, it's going to go down, and, 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 and what are you going to do? You're not going to just sell. You have to hold, you know, maybe buy some more, readjust. And the same thing with, with, you know, with our space. You know, we, you know the, the, the drop in like business, like the traditional business, means that you have to uh, you know, invest in other avenues, improve the existing business, and focus on new way of marketing and immigration services because there's a lot of business out there. It's just that the business is a little bit different, mm -hmm. and you have to understand how to shift. So if, if we have a lot of denials, that means that now we have to focus on being experts in reviewing those H-1Bs that other attorneys get denied, mm -hmm. which is kind of a service we started. So we have a service where we offer review of re requests for evidence for other H-1Bs. Mm -hmm. So even if you have an attorney right now that did your H-1B and you got a huge request for evidence, people are reaching out to find out what they're going to do. Can't, you know, because they don't trust their attorneys for whatever, you know, and they, they trust, they want a second opinion. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good market. So we mm -hmm. charge a few thousand bucks to do an RFE. We almost prepare it. And then they can hand it off to their attorney and they can do whatever they want with it. If mm -hmm. they want to use our findings, great. If, if not, at least they have some material to use. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we've done a lot of h one we know our field and we are successful with those RFEs. So now we can market it as a service to other attorneys 
and other clients that want second opinions. Mm -hmm. So it's, I never had to do it before, but now it's a new niche. Yes. Uh, you know, another thing it's is... a new creative niche that you've been, almost been forced to create, yeah, but or, now you have that as well. For example, with, with E2 investor visas, where we have more, it's much more difficult to do those in the U.S. now. So we have different ways to prepare those cases inside the U.S. And then we say, well, how about if we do your case inside the U.S., but if it gets denied or, 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 or if there's a problem, then we'll refile at the U.S. Embassy almost in the same package. So we can upsell the service, you know. So stuff like that that we come up with, which are almost the same things, but we didn't have to do it before, but now we have to, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, you know, so kind of be more creative with your, with your services, but being able to be more kind of dive, di dive deep into areas that other attorneys may not know. Like some of the new attorneys are not familiar with some of the, 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 the complicated visas. Mm -hmm. So now they can reach out to more experienced attorneys and you have more business coming from other attorneys that you didn't have before, because they could do it easily but on their own. It almost you know seems I mean? like in certain certain ways you, yeah. there's a need to specialize. Absolutely. Right. And then and then almost cooperate with other attorneys that exactly. want to so specialize in that, want to specialize in that, and then create, right. create communities like you're working on. Yeah, yeah. So the new marketing uh, strategy under Trump is that you really have to be specialized. I'm the best deportation attorney. I'm the best H-1B lawyer. I'm the best um, whatever. Because if you're not specialized, if there is an issue, then even other attorneys may reach out to you for a second opinion or even hire you or clients that are really concerned right now, you know what, we wanna go with the best mm -hmm. because we don't, we don't trust anybody else. So that way you're like, the, you know, you don't really, you, you don't have to say that you're the best, but you have to act. So you create content, mm -hmm. educational videos, articles, written format, webinars, um, you know. So by default, you, 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 they'll come to you and say, hey, you know, we saw your article, we, you know, we, we heard your podcast, we wanna come to you because we feel you know what you're doing. So you're not mm -hmm. gonna come out and say, I'm the best immigration lawyer. You're just going to create content. You're going to create authority mm -hmm. by saying, you know what? I solved this problem by by, by showcasing. Uh, like we've done, we started our our Ask uh, uh, podcast, mm -hmm. where we answer questions every day to clients that want to know just for free. And so by doing that, people come to us and say, hey, we listened to your podcast. We heard you. You answered our questions. Now I want to come to you as an expert. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's kind of where the shift. You have to. You have to. Basically, you you have to terrorize with knowledge. The more knowledge you 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 you, um, you know kind of the more knowledge you you um, create the more knowledge you spread mm -hmm. right the more people will come to you for 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 advice because people are scared and who would you go to when you when you're afraid you want to go to the person that you feel he knows what he's doing mm -hmm. it's normal like if I'm in pain and my and my tooth is hurting I'm gonna go to the best dentist you know when I had my eye surgery a couple of years ago I had to find the best you know, retina surgeon because that's the problem that I had. I didn't mm -hmm. just go to anybody online. I, I found the person that, you know, wrote the articles, spoke at conferences, you know, put the video out there mm -hmm. explaining how the retina tear occurs and how you can fix it. And that's that's who I went to, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah, and so... So that's, that's really where, you know, again, there's a lot of opportunities right now, even though it's hard, it creates opportunities for attorneys to build um, foundation for their practices by mm -hmm. creating knowledge, um, by being an authority, by being out there, mm -hmm. as opposed to being in there, you have to be out there, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Yeah, that's the key. Mm -hmm. you know? If you're everywhere, people will trust you. Yeah, it's interesting because right now, yeah, more than ever, it's really important for attorneys to adapt and get creative. Yeah. But at the same time, you have the platforms and the tools, right, uh, and the the channels that can be used to reach more people than you ever could five Absolutely. years ago, 10 years ago. And so as much as there's a contraction, as far as the, you know, the old way of doing things, there's sure. also a massive expansion opportunity. Absolutely. If you know, lawyers can embrace some of the, you know, the sure. new platforms and, and like you said, can take a, a very serious approach to providing content. When we were at the Clio Cloud Conference a couple years ago, Gary Vaynerchuk was there, he was the keynote yeah. at, at the Clio Cloud Conference. And he just talked about this mobile device this yeah. is the this is like how you even said like how many of you like use this thing while you're sitting on the can like right. raise your hand right now it's like everyone is using these mobile devices right. all the time and so there's a whole new yeah. uh, possibility that that can uh, that is opening up as other avenues are of closing course. right yeah. and so <clears throat> the, those that adapt you know will overcome and, and those that don't may yeah. lose away so what so what are the things I mean one of the things I've always appreciated about you is that you're really staying on the cutting edge of what platforms you know still have mm -hmm. the most traction. You, you obviously built a huge following on Facebook. I think 
I don't know how many fans you have nowadays, but maybe close to 200,000 or 150,000 followers, something yeah. like that, um, which is amazing for attorneys. I mean, right. you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's really a, an amazing accomplishment. But then you're also utilizing YouTube, you had a yeah. podcast. So what are some of the platforms that you're most excited about um, and one of the ones maybe that you hadn't been doing in the past that you're really paying a lot more closer attention to as potential right. content mediums? So I think this year, 2018, I think YouTube is definitely going to be, um, I mean, YouTube has always been a good platform, but I think this year, more than ever, it's, it's become a, a, a powerful tool for attorneys to use in many ways by doing um, a show or you can do um, you know a consistent content so mm -hmm. so YouTube uh, the difference now with YouTube is that you really have to do consistent content almost like a weekly on a weekly basis yes as a, not a, not just throw a video once in a while but That's on a weekly right. basis and there's a lot of engagement there because now it's kind of you know it's a search engine so people can find you much easier and then from YouTube you can send them to your other platforms like right now on our on our cover we have links to our Facebook to our Instagram and to our Twitter um, I use Instagram a lot as well. It's mm -hmm. more uh, on, a, on a smaller scale. You, you know, you connect one on one with people by DMing or getting DMs back. Mm. You know, putting photos. You know, the, the, you know, Instagram is kind of more showing your 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 personal backhand side. Mm. So people want to connect with the attorney kind of on a personal level. Mm. Like, what does he do? Does he travel? Does he does he eat uh, good food or whatever? You know, mm. we get a lot of personal inquiries, and I get a lot of uh, DMs on, on on Instagram. People like, hey, you know, we saw your feed, and we've been following you for a while, and now my cousin needs help or whatever. So that kind of stuff. I've been using Snapchat last year more. I do less here just because I don't have so much time and I feel like the, the reach is a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. But at some point I was doing a lot of Snapchat stories. I, do, I still do, so I kind of shifted to doing those stories on Instagram stories, which okay. is kind of a, you know, another video platform there. You so just find you weren't getting as much engagement on Snapchat, or you it's, just it's just it, it was it, I was getting I was getting crowd. engagement. It's just that I feel like um, with some of the changes in in Snapchat uh, the last few months, I feel that the kind of people that are we've been we've, we've been getting there are less um, uh, corporate clients and more of a personal like they become more friends mm -hmm. in a way. So I, I you know you have to choose your battles. You can you, you can be everywhere. So. But I, but I did experiment for about a year on Snapchat. I like the, the format. I like the way you can have, you know, we had a geo filter for our mm -hmm. firm mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it was good. But, um, but I, focus, I think Instagram and Facebook now are a good tools because you can, you know, the ads are, are somehow connected. Mm -hmm. So if yes. you do ads on Facebook, you, you can, you, people can see it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, of course, Facebook has always been a good tool for us. I do mm -hmm. Facebook Lives. Um, you know, you, you, you can uh, consistently do those shows. Um, so between Facebook, Instagram, and, and YouTube, I find it to be the most useful tools for uh, content creation. Okay. Um, we've been, uh, we're we're going to be testing uh, um, LinkedIn as well this mm -hmm. year uh, for articles and videos because mm -hmm. now you can do more videos there. So LinkedIn has become more of a, you know, because yeah. you know, we have an interest right now to build more of a corporate uh, clientele, mm -hmm. clients that want to do consistent visas. Yes. So I'm going to focus on building a, 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 a group on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. bring in some of these corporate HR people and do videos and stuff like that. So I'll be doing similar videos. So, you know, we're going to be building videos and cutting them into YouTube shows and uh, snippets on Facebook and in LinkedIn. So we actually hired, a, 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 you know, like a couple of video guys that are editing our stuff. And, um, you know, so it's, we're going to be investing a lot in video this year as well. Okay. So video is going to be a, a, not just YouTube, but a, a other platforms that are visual. People like visual. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the audio from the videos could be used for a podcast. So we have uh, we have uh, two podcasts, which is the marketing podcast and the immigration podcast, and we're gonna we're gonna build another podcast around immigration for stories, mm -hmm. because you know people find you on YouTube and iTunes, which is a search engine, right? And they like to listen to it on their phones. Yeah. So we're considering even building an app, which will be, they'll be able to to kind of um, aggregate their audio on their phone, mm -hmm. on a, like on a daily show, just you listening to our show on their phone. Mm -hmm. So all the audios will be on one uh, on one podcast. Okay. The ask and the, uh, and the stories one. So huh. I can just you know click on the show and then you know. So we we we'll build. So like all the sh all the different episodes will come through. They're still going to be on iTunes, but they can easily download the app and say, hey, we want to search for the one on H one B. So boom, they can just listen on the phone. So they don't have to go to iTunes necessarily. It's still going to be on iTunes, but it will be through the app. It's just easy to sort it. They can yeah. save it. They'll be able to share it with a friend mm -hmm. and uh, and download it as a, as a standalone. So we're actually building the app right now. It's gonna hopefully by summer we'll have it ready. Nice. So uh, we already had apps in the past, but um, uh, you know this is gonna be like a more of a you know 
uh, we had a book that, that I wrote, you know, last year. So that book, we, we keep pushing in different, uh, 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 you know, verticals. Mm -hmm. And so the book helped us get some speaking engagements and kind of like, you know, so we'll be using that. And uh, maybe I'll do an audio version of the book as well this mm -hmm. year, just record the whole thing. So this is some of the projects that I'm kind of uh, being involved right now. Just just a few, a few projects. A few projects. That yeah. he's involved in right now. Yeah. But the, to <laughs> summarize, the gist of it is it's, it's, it boils down to two things. You have to be out there almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. And second of all, video and audio are, are going to be key tools to build uh, uh, momentum, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive um, how seriously you've right. taken, you yeah. know, building yeah. your practice and putting out content and building community. I mean, these right. are things that, you know, great as ideas, but they take a lot, they take some work, they yeah. take effort, they take strategy, they take thought. Yeah. Um, and you know, you're talking about building an app to, to synchronize all the podcasts you created right. to one. I mean, so it's, it's amazing. And at the, uh, uh, on the other hand, I see a lot of lawyers that go, Facebook, like I have no idea, or like Instagram, like I have no following, like what, how yeah. do I even get started? So could you maybe just give like a practical, understanding of how like you go about your day right like how do you create content like what are some of the moments that you would then capture and put on Instagram what are some of the things that sure obviously you've got your shows or you're interviewing and so forth so you know what I'll do is I'll yeah. link to yeah, the different yeah, shows sure. that you have into sure. the podcast of course uh, in the show notes so that all of you can check out the different shows he has as not only to you know to learn from the content that he's producing but also to get an idea of some of the format and the way he's thinking about producing content and differentiating himself in today's market and utilizing yeah. these platforms to have a bigger reach. Right. right. But like just on the on the very kind of basic scale, someone doesn't have an Instagram account, they want to get it going and, and start building some yeah. kind of a following as a starting point or Facebook. What's well, just some some like day to day things that you do to, yeah. to start to build some traction. So I, I mean, on the video side, I mean, what I do on the video side, obviously I don't, I don't do everything myself. You know, that mm -hmm. has to be clear. So it's not like me doing everything. So well, it's key, right? It's yeah, just yeah. not constantly you no, with, no, a, no, no, with no. a handout, so, right? So on the on the audio, on the, on audio and video, I'll I'll choose a, a few days a month where I'll batch videos. So I'll do maybe 10, 15 videos in one or two days, right? Mm -hmm. Then from those videos, uh, we can strip the audio. So I have I have somebody who'll do the you know who'll do the videos. I'll assign it to a person who does the videos. Then we have somebody who edits the audio, right? And they will. You know, then we create the episodes. Some, I have somebody who will transcribe them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important on YouTube to not only do the video, but also transcribe every single word of the audio, because mm. then you have it's more searchable, right? So mm -hmm. the person will do this, the, the. And you put that in the in the of course in the in the, in the content yeah. in the description, yeah. And in the in the in the, and in the blog uh, uh, podcast the show notes, right? Mm -hmm. So we have somebody does the transcription, somebody does the audio stripping and editing that, somebody does the the the. Um, the thumbnails, art. We mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, so all these people, they are contractors. They don't work for their law firm, but they're contractors that we contract to do, um, you know, just like the person who's doing the video today, he's been contracted, you know, so they don't have to be, you don't have to worry about having somebody always on payroll. Yes. So, when, so whenever we need them for like these two, three days, they are contracted to do this work every month. And this, all I do is record the audio and the video. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. I don't edit anything. I don't learn how to do uh, any of that uh, art, that's, that's not my job. It's so your mastery, yeah. I come in here, I, I do my audio, I do my videos, and then I assign it to people to do all the stuff. And then, you know, we have a schedule when we upload them, we're gonna upload them on a daily basis and, and, and the show comes every, every Monday or whatever, wh whatever day we have the, the show. And then, uh, as far as Instagram, Instagram is, obviously Instagram is more personal. So Instagram, my strategy with Instagram, some people post almost every day. Mm -hmm. I used to, but I'm not anymore. I post maybe once a week or, you know, whenever I, whenever I have something interesting to do. Because Instagram is not necessarily about frequency, it's about quality. Mm -hmm. So I invested in uh, a few apps and a designer to have really quality. If you look at my photos from like a year ago and, and look at them in the last six months, you'll see very high quality photos. Hmm. Because they've been edited to look very, you know, you know with lighting and uh, so. Most of my photos are from my travel, uh, from like food events or from something cool that happens. That's why, that's why I don't post every day. Because mm -hmm. I feel like for me, it has to be something quality, something cool to say. Yeah. And As then, opposed to like, hey, I'm eating this. Exactly. Or whatever, yeah. And so, and some people will post every day on Instagram, which mm -hmm. is fine. But you don't have to. Instagram is more like a, so people will follow my photos. They like, um, you know, the, the, the quality, the art. I, 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 when I travel, I post like different destinations. And then I kind of use hashtags that are, that are interesting to, uh, to, to, to reach more people. And mm -hmm. I always have like immigration lawyer, lawyer life, 
more like a lifestyle and who the person behind the brand, right? Mm -hmm. So that's and people connect. And, and do you keep it uh, sp uh, somewhat related to the the things that you're doing that are related to immigration? A little bit. So yeah, for so example, if you're I'll give an example. Conference, we're going to talk about this, and yeah, this is how it fits. Exactly. In. So yeah. for example, let's say I, I travel. I came back from in the summertime, and I was in um, you know I was in uh, in Bora Bora. So I said, oh, it's amazing because uh, so many people, so many so many different countries, all in this area, and, and they all talk about their freedom to travel and something like that. So there is a little bit of connection. Or you know, recently we had an uh, interesting case where we uh, uh, saved this guy um, from deportation and it was all over the news, like, you know, 15 news stations in three days. So I, what I did, I, I, I posted a photo of me uh, with the guy and, um, and um, you know, um, assembly member Tal Gloria that helped us release him. Mm -hmm. And that was a nice photo of, uh, in his office with a flag. So, you know, kind of like more inspirational. So that, that's immigration related. But I don't, Put like ads. I can see some attorneys on Instagram. You know, we are. You know, one of one. Call our office or whatever. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's more. Instagram is designed to be a personal outlet for people to reach. Some example of cases that I got from Instagram. We had this guy who is. Um, he's an he's an art dealer, right? Mm -hmm. And he's been following me for like I, I would say about a year because I I see when somebody likes. Mm -hmm. And then one day I got a DM from him. DM is a uh, direct message, and he says. Um, uh, Jacob, I, I love the last photo you posted from, um, I was in Paris. Mm -hmm. Me in Paris, uh, I, was, I, I was in Paris. Again, immigration related, I was speaking before um, um, uh, a conference of startups mm -hmm. in Station F, the largest uh, incubator in, in Paris. Mm. I put uh, three photos during my trip, uh, four photos, me, um, the Eiffel Tower, and I had like uh, Lawyer Life, Immigration, blah, 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 Paris. And I said, you know what? Um, my business partner is also in Paris. Mm. I want you to meet him. And so I, the last day, I, I meet the guy, and um, and he basically needs to bring fifteen engineers to his startup in San Francisco. Mm. So the guy, the guy follows me for a year, no comments, and he saw me in Paris. He loved that photo of me standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. It's a blue, it's a beautiful uh, uh, photo there with, with lights and everything, and um, and that resulted in almost. Um, you know, fifty thousand dollars of business from that one guy on mm. Instagram. It's a very, very direct. Because once you refer me to that guy, he hired me with no questions. Because mm. he was, a, you know, he, it's his company. That's right. Say so you hired this lawyer. Mm -hmm. I met him in Paris. We talked for like an hour. We signed the deal. And next thing you know, when I when I came to San Diego, he wired the money, and I and, I, and we did the visas. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So yes. So that's the part. Instagram is more of not a volume base. It's more of a personal connection, very high quality leads that you can make, mm -hmm. and and a connections. Yes. To, uh, other attorneys that connect with you, so that's how you do it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a balance between, like, this is what I'm doing, these are yeah. the things I'm doing, but there's always like kind of a relating back yeah. to immigration. But yeah. also, people get to know yeah. like who you really are as a person, right? You can like, do whatever you want. You can do. I decided to change my focus to do more of a like landscape, um, you know, beautiful photos because that's kind of it's all about visual. Mm -hmm. Instagram's not it's more visual. Mm -hmm. People don't really know how to use it. People just kind of think it's like a Facebook. It's not a Facebook. It really has to be visual. It has to have. You can do video, like a short video. Mm -hmm. You can do. I I, I do mostly photos mm -hmm. and, and like high quality photos. Uh, there's another attorney. Uh, his name is Lee Rosen, and he travels the world. And he also he also has a nice Instagram account, but he tr he shares his stories wh wherever he is in the world. And, and for him, it's more of a building relationship and sharing his travels. He doesn't really make. He does business for him, but it's more builds his. It's like an outlet for his lifestyle. Mm. So yeah, you, you can do different things with it. Yeah. But Good I think the best way to start is just like taking nice photos and maybe uh, you know sharing your your, your personal passions. Mm -hmm. If you like golf, golfing photos. If you like uh, I don't know cooking, you know you can be still the lawyer like lawyer life, hashtag you know, um, you know pa pasta recipe whatever. But it's still mm -hmm. kind of legal related because mm -hmm. then people see how oh, the guy is like he fa he's a family guy. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to be my my attorney. Or he's a uh, he he does golf. I like golf. Mm -hmm. I want to connect with him. You know. Yeah. So That's people really are coming into your office not because like. Yeah. I'm this immigration lawyer. Yeah. We help with these things. It's like, hey, these are qualities yeah. that I like about a human being. Right. How will they know from the website? They're never going to know from your website. Mm -hmm. How will they know from your from your blog? They're not going to know. How even from Facebook Live, they don't really know who you are as as Dave or as Jacob. Mm -hmm. But on Instagram, you can open that little door. I like golf, or I, there's a picture of me and my son we're boxing. Yeah, people like that photo because it, it shows that I'm a I'm a family man and, and I like my son, mm -hmm. or whatever. Somebody may connect with that. So yes. it's just. That's how I use Instagram. Everybody, I mean, that, and I feel that's the, the right way to do it based on everything that I hear and I see because my favorite accounts are the accounts that are personal and I can see a little bit of glimpse into the life of, like, if you follow David Beckham on Instagram, it's a perfect example. 
Hmm. He's at home with his kids. He is traveling. He eats. He posts food. Of course, he's David Beckham, so nobody, whatever he does, people are going to follow. <laughs> but he doesn't do like, you know, it's just him, his life, mm -hmm. which I think is the, is, is the right way to do it. Yes. Because you learn a lot about who he is by, by following his account. Well, and, and I think there's something mm. that I also am noticing, and that is that you study and watch what other people do. Absolutely. Right? And you, you, you have you to pay attention right. and go, oh, wh what's the approach here? What's the strategy here? Right? So yeah. it's not just like come up with ideas, but you're constantly asking questions. You're constantly yeah. following right. the people that have the highest accounts. Yeah. Like, what is it they're doing? What are the strategies exactly. that work? You know, and exactly. comparing, right? So. Because I think, I th you see, the, the biggest issue in the legal space, in any, in the, you know, whether it's immigration or family law or, or any practice, is that, you know, most attorneys are always doing the same things. Mm -hmm. Most of them are yellow pages. Most of them have websites. Most of them have blogs. Mm -hmm. Most of them have videos on YouTube that are look the same, like a talking head. Um, and, and then, you know, where is the innovation? The innovation are attorneys that are using automation software. Mm -hmm. The innovation is by attorneys that are, you know, doing... Uh, things that are not normal that are they're doing, you know, they, they're giving free information first and then they're charging where they should charge information that are unbundling their services. Mm -hmm. These are the the innovation that are in our space, you know, yes. attorneys that are, you know, uh, you know, you know, doing online courses mm -hmm. and, 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 and selling uh, services that are necessary, not trading dollar for for time, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. those are the innovation that we have in our space as opposed to the attorneys that are doing the same thing. You know, I'm going to do this because everybody else is doing this. I'm going to pay fine and low because everybody is, I'm going to be on AVO, you know, pay them for advertising because everybody's doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot, most attorneys are, are not innovators. There are a lot of attorneys that are, mm -hmm. and you know, some of them are, are members of a bundle. Some of them are, you know, you know, we, we, you know, they have, they speak in conferences, but, but most attorneys are, are just like not innovators. They're just not marketers. Mm -hmm. They're not business yeah. people. They are good lawyers, mm -hmm. but they're not business people. And, and I think the way to survive this, you know, Trump era is to really be a business a business person first, mm -hmm. so you can be adaptable. Yeah, if changes are, are happening, right? Well, that's one of the things that you've embodied, right? right? It's like not only are you building a real high yeah. successful immigration practice, but you've got the community, the co the co working spaces. Right. You got coffee shops. You're you're traveling yeah. and doing conferences and so forth. Right. You're 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 an entrepreneur first. Correct. And a, and a lawyer second. Would, yeah. you, would you agree with that? Which, which uh, yeah, I, I do agree. But this is just me. I'm not saying everybody has to be like that. But what I mean is that they do need to understand that the law firm is a business. Mm -hmm. And if you well, think yeah. like that, then even if you're not a business person, you understand that you have to, you know, is, is this part legal producing? Or is this attorney that I hired worth it? Or when is the right time to bring in another associate? Yes. All these things you have to know. Yes. You have to be aware of that. And then mm -hmm. even if you're not the best business person in the world, you if you build systems that are working for you, then you will learn. Yes. Right? Well, that threads so, right into what you know, I think yeah. we wanted to explore a bit next is, is that yeah. being an entrepreneur first mm -hmm. is someone where you have to um, embrace systems, embrace right. looking at the numbers, looking at process maps. Right. Um, that's kind of out there, but yeah. really you know, looking at, okay, at each step of the process from the time we acquire a lead, and obviously all the marketing side is just to bring in leads. Right. Well, now, once you have the leads, then okay, how do we you know, right. get them on the phone, connect with them, you get them enrolled in our service, then from there, how do we start to deliver services? And one of the things that's very unique about your firm is you have, you know, six or seven, or six lawyers, I think, and then also right. 15 support staff support staff yeah. in your firm, because right. you've, you've done so well on the marketing side, you have a high volume of intake, but you've also, you know, been able to scale that intake in a, in a really intelligent way. So right. maybe you can just talk about um, some of the processes you've developed uh, and also how you use your support staff in order to leverage your time and, right. and serve such a high volume of clients. So, you know, we use, um, you know, we, we use different um, funnels to get the clients in there. So does, this is the part of the marketing. But once they call the office, we keep tweaking the way people answer the phone. Um, you know, we have, a, a, we have two people that are assigned just to receive them on the phone. They, all mm -hmm. they do is that. So they, they, they take the intake, they, they interview the client, they understand what they need, and then they will assign them to the right person in the office to talk to them. Mm. What we also started doing recently, we started using um, a tool called CallRail, if you heard of it. So CallRail, what it does, mm -hmm. it, it essentially records most of the calls that come from our ads. And the, the reason we do that is because sometimes I listen to a CallRail and I hear a paralegal say, um, well, uh, you know, the attorney is not here right now, but I will call you in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when I hear that, I'm like, what the hell is happening here? Nobody's going to call you in the morning. If you don't give them the answer now, they're going to go to somebody else. So what, what, I, what we usually do is, 
if somebody is not at the office, let's say somebody needs a question about an e-visa, and I'm not there or the other attorneys, that paralegal is supposed to say, somebody's going to call you in the next 30 minutes. And then she will text the attorney, and the attorney will call, whenever they are, they'll call that person. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be at the office. Mm -hmm. As long as they get that message, they'll call them. So that's yes. kind of like, we, we want to avoid the, the we want to be, you know, the idea is to be a welcoming uh, firm. Mm -hmm. So somebody calls, hey, responsive. Yeah, so, right. oh, really? So you are basically right now, um, your wife is stuck at the airport. No problem. We'll, uh, you know, where is she at now? Uh, let us try to uh, see what we can do. So feeling that they, they feel like when they call, they need to feel that there is an answer or, or, or not, no hesitation. Yes. There's no like uncertainty. Yes, of course we can help you. Yes, we can do it. And even if you can do it, let's say we had a case where somebody needed um, um, a family lawyer first. Mm -hmm. They're not ready for the immigration yet. They needed to get divorced first and then they could have done the waiver. So the paralegal on the phone will be like, you know, you really have to get, uh, uh, this is something that you need to be divorced before we can even do anything. So here's what we're going to do. Call this attorney. She is the family lawyer that we usually work with. Mm -hmm. And then once you call her, start the process of the, of, of, of the divorce. Now, probably a couple of weeks after, let's all get together and figure out a way to start your immigration. So the person feels like we're not handing him off to somewhere else, but yes. we kind of like, they feel safe. You know what I mean? So that's what. Yeah, when they call, they call, need to feel safe. Whatever mm -hmm. that is, so we keep, we keep tweaking our, our 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 script, because every time it doesn't. You know, sometimes I hear it and it doesn't work. So I say, no, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said, um, you know, we 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 do have. You know, we don't. You know, we. we you know, how many cases do you do of, of this and that? What is the answer to that? Well, you know, we we don't really keep track of that. But like what I can tell you, we have a higher rate of success in those cases. Something you always have to have an answer that the, that whoever's on the phone feels safe. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in when they, so they feel we feel that we call the right place whatever mm -hmm. that wh whatever that formula is that's kind of the, the the result that I want to get to and once they once they go through the funneling of the of, of the phone call they get to the paralegal who is going to start uh, you know uh, working on their case once they signed mm -hmm. and typically we try to get them informed we have a, a system where they get emails every once in a while every few weeks with updates on the case automated mm -hmm. and some of them are not automated depends on what the case is. Um, we use uh, my case as our uh, case management tool, mm -hmm. and then we use uh, a Simple Citizen as our. Simple Citizen is not available yet to the masses for attorneys, but we use it because we are, you know, I'm an investor and an advisor of the company, so we have mm -hmm. a tool. But before Simple Citizen, and, and I still use INS Zoom mm -hmm. as our as our uh, immigration software, mm -hmm. but we're more transitioning to Simple Citizen, which will have a full, uh, robust uh, intake form. The moment they, they call the office, all through the the whole. Uh, even when um, we get their information from the government, it's built into the system. Hmm. That's, they have a, a, an AI tool that will get your information from the government. Uh, like right now, when you, case, when you check your case online, it will mm -hmm. be in the, in the system. Hmm. It's a very cool uh, tool that they're, they're, they're working on right now. So it pulls down the data right from the From US the government, CIS. yeah, okay. from everywhere. So the Labor Department, so we, we're using, you know, so kind of like, a, let's say INS Zoom right now, but Simple Citizen, is, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a legal software to use for our tools. And then we use um, it's practice management and document automation. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And then we use Active Campaign for our, mm -hmm. our software to uh, to be able. It's kind of like Infusionsoft, but we use use it to get all our leads into one space and then mm -hmm. be able to kind of break them down. Yes. Um, in addition to that, we use uh, PipeDrive um, as a backend to be able to. Um, so the person who's on the phone who deals with our leads. PipeDrive is like a sales software where you you're selling products, mm -hmm. and it, it tells you like if the lead is hot. Or uh, you know, what happened with the lead? Did you, did, uh, are you familiar with PipeDrive? I actually haven't seen that platform. So PipeDrive is kind of like, um, what I like about PipeDrive is that um, I can see visually which leads are being treated. Why didn't they call the person? Why is he waiting? They, 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 have, a, they have a tool called rotting. It's mm -hmm. rotting in the system, literally. Yeah. And it's become red. So they haven't called this client for two days. They haven't, you know, what's happening with their lead? Mm -hmm. So PipeDrive is kind of like a... Um, um, it's like a pipe where you know you you, you you put our names in there and and it kind of follows up with you in a live visual to see what's happening with our leads. Mm -hmm. and the person who's on the phone is using that. Right. So we, we use a lot of tools, not one tool, but it works for us. We kind of build it in, and of course we have systems. We use a, um, a sweet process. Do you know what sweet process is? Mm. So sweet process is a cool tool. So let's say, let's say I want to tell like somebody sweet like a sweet like in a sweet, building, like sweet, or like, sweet like sweet, a taste, like a taste. Sweet okay. process. So let's say. Let's say I want to I want to know I want to teach the receptionist how to answer the phone. So Sweet Process will allow you to record a voice so she can listen to it. We can put a PDF in there, like in one, two, three, four, or even a video flow. We can record a video on your iPhone, upload it to Sweet Process, and I, I say, hey, 
you're now the new receptionist, spend an hour in sweet process and, and see how we answer the phone. So the first thing she's gonna have is a welcome video. Hey, uh, whatever, th welcome to our law firm. Here's how you answer the phone. You pick up the phone, you say, welcome to the Sapashik law firm. How can we help you? And then you ask the four questions. Are you, are, you, are you calling for a family matter? Are you calling for a business matter? Are you calling for a deportation matter? Um, and then you have a series of PDFs, how to actually move extensions. You click on this button, and it sends you to extension number five. This one sends you to extension number six. Mm -hmm. So it's visual. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is an actual video, a mm. screen flow. Here's what happens when you have to move five extensions. Here's what happens when you have to move this and then. So it's kind of like a, one of those, uh, uh, so it's sweet process. Everything in the office is in the sweet process. Mm -hmm. They can download it, in, they can, you can print it out, you can see it. Anybody can log in there. So it's like training modules, Correct. Like video exactly. and documentation All our and systems instructions. Are there. Let's say right now I want to teach somebody how to um, you know, put together exhibits. Mm -hmm. I'll do a video. Uh, hey, here's how we do exhibits. This is the only way you can do exhibits in, in this law firm. We use blue sheets, pink dividers, green uh, labels. All right? Here's, here's what the labels are. And then it's going to be a PDF. The PDF mm -hmm. will, will tell them how to manually put this. It's, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the actual checklist. And finally, there's going to be an audio thing that I recorded. Hey, guys, I'm tired of you not you know, doing the, this the right way. <laughs> this is the only way, and the audio has a date. Mm -hmm. uh, February, you know. This is the only way we're going to do labels from now on. Okay? And all the videos from before are obsolete. It's all in that same one. Uh, you know, it's easy to log in, and I can share users. It's, on, it's online. Mm -hmm. It's not on our system. It's not on our server. It doesn't clog space. Mm -hmm. It's on, and we, we use uh, uh, we use Microsoft Accessible on demand, right? So people can go home, Correct. they can study yeah, at the home exactly. if they want to. Yeah, we use Microsoft 365 for all our emails. We are all mm -hmm. connected with our calendars. You know, everything is in the cloud. A SharePoint. We have nothing in the office. It's all. Uh, it's we are all. You know, a voice of IP. Mm -hmm. So people can you know be at home, and I can patch calls to them. Mm. But that's like that's call rail too, right? So yeah, you can patch absolutely. it and then also record Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. So you can have that level yeah. of oversight. So these are the kind of systems we use. So we build it for us because mm -hmm. we have so many people. So we need all. I need all these systems. I need you know. Now we're working on on uh, finding uh, uh, tracking performance. So we're using. Uh, I'm I'm testing what is called. Have you heard of Lean? Lean. Um, it's called. Um, um, Lean is based on Toyota. Toyota principles. The Toyota yeah. the company. Yeah, ties in. So uh, yeah. So one of our clients is a former Toyota employee, and he built uh, what is called uh, Honshu. Honshu is, is a consulting company, a system, where it's modeled after the efficiency of Toyota. Mm -hmm. Who is efficient, who is not? Mm -hmm. How can you become more efficient? We're trying to bring those people into it. It's uh, brand new right now. We're just starting to, 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 uh, to try to work with them. And, and basically say, do you need this people? Do you need this person? Why, why do you need this person? How efficient is he at your law firm? Mm -hmm. Right? Why do you need that space? Do you need all that space? Can we... Mm -hmm. So Hanshu is, is, is the company and the system that we're going to be implementing. And I'm going to actually going to go, I'm going to go to Japan in June to spend time in the Toyota factory to be able to, to Im immerse myself in the principles of, of Toyota and, and bring it back to, uh, to the firm and see how we can, you know, what we can do there. That's awesome. And yeah. of course, when you're going to Japan yeah. to you know, learn how the Japanese factory works of course. and so forth, and yeah. the Toyota factory. You're going to yeah. be sharing on Instagram. Of course, you'll be sharing Absolutely. doing audio. Maybe yeah, you're yeah. doing interview. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe I'll come back with a course, a whole full course around the, because nobody had done it for a law firm before. Mm -hmm. Take that model of Toyota. Because what is this model? The model is that they everything is efficient, to mm -hmm. the bone, to the T, right? If you if you're working, all the engineers that used to work for Toyota, they are so efficient because the system is like, you know, there's no waste, mm -hmm. right? And the yeah. reverse engineers back into a law firm, and now you scale it five times, x five. Mm. Right, so that's going to be like the, the the focus yeah this year, and 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 more broadly, why is it yeah. so important? Like when you go from solo practitioner to then hiring staff and so forth, yeah. why is efficiency so key? Well, I mean, I, I could share at least from from one standpoint. Obviously, in, in immigration, you're doing a lot of flat rates. Yeah, yeah. It's a specific fixed fee. Yeah. Right. In certain cases, you know, might yeah. be two thousand, twenty five hundred, fifteen hundred. Yeah. And so your income is directly determinant yeah. by how long it takes you to get that job done, exactly, right? Exactly. If it takes you forty hours, correct? To, to, to we lose that. Yeah. yeah, you're not, yeah, not going to be keeping those doors and, open. And so. we, have, we have a lot of overhead. You know, we have you know almost twenty support, uh, 20, 20 people working there. We have uh, a full building that we ha release. I mean, there's a lot of expenses, so you can't you know you, you even as much as the volume that we get. If you're not if you're not efficient, then you're not going to make money, mm -hmm. and you won't be able to support all these operations. So that's why you really have to, like you know, I feel like. Even if I think that I am efficient, I know that I'm not as efficient as I could be, mm -hmm. and th therefore that the whole, uh, you know, Toyota uh, efficiency system, the lean methodology, is something that I want I want to implement in the law firm mm -hmm. and take it to all the other businesses that I have to make them much more efficient. 
Mm. Yeah. So are you, are you creating, uh, so you've been doing some trainings at, yeah. at the coding space yeah. um, where you're training attorneys how to do this. Yeah. Are you also building some courses for attorneys or so thinking of building some we courses? Are building, you know, we're building some courses. Like I said, I was so busy with everything else that I haven't, you know, I, I'm not done with it, but I have a course that I'm, it's based on the Enchanting Way, our system, mm -hmm. how to build and scale a law firm mm -hmm. in three months. Uh, and the reason it's, uh, it's three months is because, you know, it, it takes three months to, uh, to launch a practice. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you what you're gonna do with it. But those first three months are key to any operation of a consulting service business like a mm -hmm. firm. Yeah. And so hopefully I'll be able to uh, accomplish that course as well uh, sometime this year. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually working on something pretty uh, robust for other attorneys. It will focus on attorneys, accountants, and uh, consultants. Okay. But I have a specific vertical for lawyers, mm. right? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's something uh, I'm happy to collaborate yeah, in any way we absolutely. can because we do have a, yeah, yeah, a lot sure. of attorneys that come on board that we'll are just launching a new solo practice. Yeah, I mean, once I have, a, you know, once I have even a prototype, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll definitely sit down on this. But, uh, you know, this, again, is, this I, is probably the most common thing that yeah. attorneys are struggling with, especially, you know, once they sign yeah. up with us and start getting a lot more leads than they're used yeah. to. They go, I can't manage all the, I can't, yeah. I can't be calling the leads in real time yeah. and then also working on the cases and overseeing. Yeah. So you have to have, yeah. these systems in place. And, and the profession, the legal profession, a lot yeah. of times, you know, really struggles to modernize, sure. really struggles to implement some of these systems, or sure. especially the technology side. Yeah. And it all takes time, right? So yeah. um, being able to provide some guidance yeah. and, and tools, and just in the way you are right now, is just really helpful for attorneys to start to get to know how these pieces yeah. start to come together right. and just put a little time each week into yeah. implementing some of these things. Yeah, Because yeah. it can really make all the difference, especially when you're offering flat rates or yeah. delivering on services. Exactly. Is, uh, your your effective hourly rate mm -hmm. or your income is directly proportional to your ability to build effective systems and offload yeah. to your staff. Mm -hmm. And that's something it seems like you've done pretty well. Like anytime a case comes through your door, you have the option where you can either have one of your attorneys handle it. Sure. And, and all these attorneys, they work under salary, right, as opposed Correct. to being contract lawyers? Yeah, so in, in, in our firm, we have a, 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 like a family division for immigration, a business division for immigration, mm -hmm. and then the litigation, removal, and defense. So if it's a family case, the people who work on the family division, they know what they're doing, so they're more efficient. Mm -hmm. They don't have to relearn it. They know, boom, 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 how to do a marriage case. The system is, so they can, so let's say, let's take an example. Let's say a paralegal gets paid, let's say 20 bucks an hour, right? Mm -hmm. And it takes, um, you know, 12 hours to do a marriage case, mm -hmm. right? And let's say we charge $2,000 to do a marriage case, mm -hmm. and an attorney will spend an hour to review it, mm -hmm. then we're still profitable, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, let's say 200 bucks to, to do the case, and then another, you know, 200 bucks for the attorney to review it, so now we are at, I don't know, four, let's say 500 bucks. We still make 1,500 bucks profit, let's mm -hmm. say even $1,000 profit mm -hmm. on any of those cases. That's pretty bad, Th that's pretty good. Yes. Right, so uh, it's just an example, but we try, no, it's, not, it's not always the case. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes mm -hmm. there are complications. Sometimes we, we have cases that, that drain us. But if you have enough cases that keep you afloat and they're profitable, then the ones that drain you, you know, it all evens up eventually. Well, and also you, you yeah. can start to analyze your, what your pricing needs to be at if you, if you study right. your cases over time. Do of course, you, yeah. Do you put some yeah. time into looking at how long each, each case? Like, do you keep track of time? Yes. And we do it more now. And again, that's part of the system that we want to implement. Like, how, how long is it going to take? How long, like, why, why is it taking that long? Can you, can you cut down some of the hours? So we are really, we're monitoring, we have, we have reports. And we try to work with those uh, uh, staff members to, to teach them to, to be more efficient, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's key. Because people are, 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 especially when you work on flat rates, people are not very efficient. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep them on track. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that's, yeah. that, that's notable about having staff and having an attorney is yeah. you have the option, because you said a paralegal works right. on it for 20, you know, 12 hours. Yeah. That's $20 an hour, right? She's doing the work. Then you have an attorney that can yeah. review it. And so it gives you the option as to whether you even want to be involved personally or Correct. one of your attorneys are doing it. Correct. But at the end of the day, it's maybe an hour or two of your time. Sure. Even if you were going to take the case sure. um, to maybe get the job done, minus complications, anything else that might be involved, of course. Right. But you're, you're leveraging your time in a way where right. you're not just doing, if you're doing everything yourself, of course. you're just yeah. trading time for money, right? Absolutely. And, and I, would, I, I would stress that even for like, people who are just starting out their practices, the moment you can hire somebody, mm -hmm. even part-time, like even a contract basis, do it. Because even two hours that you're free from doing the work, you'll open up the, the way to, to marketing or, or you know, you know, just organizing the, the financials or focusing on what needs to happen. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying hire you know, right away, but at least get somebody to help a couple of hours a day just to kind of free those hours that you need to do something else that is not necessarily the work. Yes. Yeah. Well, especially things that are, uh, 
yeah. lower value tasks. Like, you, like in other words, if you can find someone that can do that for 20 an hour, yeah, yeah. and you can build a system to do that, and yeah. you have a training platform like Sweet Process or something where of you can course. just give yeah. them the standard operating procedures on how to do that, sure. now that's been offloaded to them, Right. And you're not, you know, that's one less hour or two hours that, that you, you have, have to, to focus, put in yeah. each individual case yourself. Yeah. And so it massively increases your effective Absolutely. hourly rate as a yeah. result. And yeah. like you said, enables you to focus your time on other things that are going to help you grow the firm. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Cool, man. Well, listen, this has been uh, <laughs> good, right? Just a broad, a sweeping, inspirational right. uh, interview. Yeah. And all, obviously, it's, uh, it's impressive, all the, all the different things that you have in the works. And like I said, how you're really embracing the times and right. putting out just amazing content using all the platforms right. that are available to attorneys. And it's really just a, you know, it's a great example of any number of the things that Jacob's doing you can implement in your practice. Pick the ones that really make the most sense for you. Um, and once you start to implement, you know, develop these content strategies, put out the videos, you know, build some, some forms of efficiency, start to look at how to scale your practice. We have a lot of podcasts. Uh, right. Interviews mm -hmm. with other attorneys that have scaled out their practice. Um, you know, we, I, we you know we can link those in the show notes yeah. as well. So uh, it's just you know I really appreciate you coming on and sharing all the things that you've got in the works. Sure. Or at least just a few of them. We got yeah, we yeah, cover yeah. all the things yeah. you got going on, man. It's uh, yeah. it's awesome. Thanks, man. So appreciate thank you it. so much for your time. Thanks. Pleasure being here. Yeah, and so for everyone else that's been watching, we really appreciate your participation. Mm -hmm. All the links will be in the show notes. Uh, Unbelievable.com forward slash podcast. Uh, to this episode. You can also find us on YouTube uh, just by searching Unbundled Attorney and then you can subscribe to our channel to get each new video podcast as we share it. And uh, with that, and if you want to reach out to us, you can also send us an email to podcast at unbundledattorney.com. We'd love to hear from you, uh, what you learned from this episode, what you've learned from any of the other episodes, suggestions for future episodes, uh, future guests, um, or anything else you'd like to see us cover. So with that, we'll wrap up. Thanks so much for your participation. And of course, we'll see you all on the next episode. For more information about how our exclusive unbundled leads can help you grow your practice, visit our website at unbundledattorney.com. You can watch each new episode of the podcast on the Unbundled Attorney YouTube channel. Or if you prefer to listen, you can find us on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. And be sure to subscribe so you get each new episode as soon as it's available. And remember to leave us your review on iTunes. We read each and every one of them and really appreciate your support of the show. Once again, thanks for listening.